Hey, this is the Green Witch, and today we're going to talk about uh, some migraine headaches and some possible herbal remedies for those. I want you to keep in mind that uh, herbal remedies are not always approved by the FDA, and you should always seek advice of your doctor. Okay, so let's get on to the real meat of this now. Um, this was actually requested by a member who does suffer from migraine headaches, so I want to make sure that everybody in our group is well taken care of. So if you're one of the millions of Americans who experience migraines, you know that they're much more than just a headache. The intense throbbing, pulsing, and that excruciating pain that accompany a migraine can actually be debilitating. In fact, more than 90% of people who get migraines cannot work or function normally during an episode. And that's according to the Migraine Research Foundation. Now, now most people who experience migraines opt for medication. But recently we've seen that many are now turning to natural therapies such as relaxation techniques and herbal remedies. You know, years before the introduction of modern medicine, cultures worldwide developed herbal remedies for headaches and other common migraine symptoms. And many of those herbal remedies have actually survived the passage of time. Although most herbal remedies haven't been thoroughly scientifically tested for their effectiveness, uh, many are rapidly gaining the support of the modern, I'm sorry, the modern medical community. Um, and as I said in the beginning, always use caution when considering herbal treatments for migraines and discuss your decision with a healthcare professional before beginning or stopping any medical or herbal treatment. And that's because here with medications your doctor uh, may have you on. Okay, so uh, let's start looking at some of the uh, various herbs that we can use uh, to help in uh, relieving the pain uh, of a migraine. So the very first one that I want to bring up is feverfew. Now feverfew was first used in ancient Greece and that was as early as the 5th century BC and it's been used for a variety of ailments including fever, swelling, inflammation. Um, but people also uh, took the herb commonly to relieve aches and pains such as headaches in the first century. It's native to the Balkan Mountains but it can be found worldwide and not meaning to plug our store but pretty much any of the herbs that we mention here, that we mention here um, can be found uh, or at least ordered from the familiar territory store. Um, you can always contact Kelly or I for herbs you don't find there because we we can uh, always get them. So feverfew um, is prepared by drying the leaves, the flowers, and the stems. Um, and make uh, extracts or even drink as a tea. Um, and a study in 2011 suggested that feverfew is a very effective treatment for mig migraines, fever, the common cold, uh, and arthritis. Um, but it's, it's not the only herb, and it does have some minor side effects such as bloating, canker sores, and nausea. Uh, those are usually found in less than 1% of the population, but you do need to be aware of it. Of course, pregnant women um, should avoid this because it is a blood thinning medication, so if you're uh, pregnant, um, please do not use feverfew. Butterbur is another one that has been used uh, extensively for headaches throughout history. Um, and again, it was uh, a Greek physician who first began using Butterbur. Um, and Butterbur is found in Europe, Asia, and of course, North America. Um, what you want to do with Butterbur is the purified root extract. Um, and uh, if you take 50 to 75 milligrams twice a day, it's extremely effective in uh, helping with migraines. 
You want to, of course, take that in a pill form, so you would actually buy the purified root, buy the purified root extract and then put those into capsules. And if you have a, a really inexpensive capsule machine, it's easy enough to do. Another one, peppermint. Uh, obviously, one of my favorites. Uh, <coughs> it can uh, uh, be most effective if you uh, use peppermint as a capsule, a liquid capsule. And earlier we actually showed you how to make an extract, uh, or I should say a tincture of that, and you could use that right in the capsules. Um, also great if you use it in tea. Um, and tea, of course, is, is great uh, and easy to do with, with peppermint. Uh, and a 2010 study in the International Journal of Clinical Practice found that it was extreme melting migraine pain and easing nausea when applied to the forehead. So again, if you made that uh, extract, that tincture that we talked about earlier, you can just apply it to the forehead, about a 10% solution. So that would mean that if you have uh, a little cup, put in uh, 10 drops of, of uh, water and one drop of uh, the peppermint oil, or spearmint oil, and that's easy enough to do. Um, again, if you put in 20 drops, then you'll put in two drops as a 10% solution if you're using uh, spearmint or peppermint. Okay, so let's move on. Um, willow bark extract is uh, actually the precursor for our modern day aspirin. Um, uh, willow bark extract is wonderful for. Uh, for migraines, and you can actually find that um, in capsule form and as a chewable bark at most uh, health food stores. And then we, have, of course, we have ginger. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, ginger is used for migraines and also for stomach pain, nausea, arthritis, and cold and flu symptoms. It's a tropical Asian plant and has been used in herbal medicine, especially in China, for over 2,000 years. And it's really popular in Indian and Arabic medicines. Um, and it's been that way since ancient times. Uh, ginger has been well documented as an anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial. So it has a lot of other properties to it as well. And a 2014 study by the uh, phytotherapy research showed that ginger powders benefits um, were comparable to uh, sumatriptan, which is a prescription migraine drug, but it has much sewer, uh, <laughs> much sewer, much fewer uh, side effects. And most people can tolerate fresh or dried ginger root. You can buy that at just about any uh, grocery store. Um, but again, be careful not to combine ginger with blood thinners because of potential drug interactions. Uh, ginger tea are uh, easy to obtain, or you can make your own. Just take some some fresh ginger root and grate it and make a tea out of that. You could also try drinking cool ginger water. And we're gonna we're gonna look at some other ones here um, for headaches and uh, migraines in particular. Now valerian, um, native to Europe and Asia, and also North America, um, native to Europe and Asia and also North America, and the use of that for headaches can be traced back to Greece and Rome uh, from the time of Hippocrates. It was recognized as a remedy for uh, many things, including headaches, but it's also good for insomnia, heart palpitations, tremors, and anxiety. Uh, it's actually sometimes used in the very modern treatment of migraines. Um, but it hasn't been researched quite enough to determine how useful it is. But certainly for many, many people, um, uh, a valerian root tea or a tincture uh, or a liquid extract um, works wonders. You can also uh, uh, powder up the root and create capsules. So that's another good, 
good one for migraines, coriander seed. Um, there's another one uh, for over seven uh, had been used in healing and of course seasoning, but it began with healing. Um, it was lauded for its ability to treat ailments that range from allergies to diabetes to migraines. And traditional Ayurvedic medicine uses coriander to relieve sinus pressure as well as the migraines and you simply pour hot water over the fresh seeds and inhale the steam. That's one of the easier methods to use. Um, of course the coriander seeds can also be chewed. They can be used in teas. Um, you can find some oral extracts that are available and you can put them in the food. It does the same thing. So uh, coriander is certainly one to strongly, strongly consider. Lavender oil. Um, so lavender oil has been used in the treatment of migraine, in the treatment of migraine. Um, here though, it's a little different. We're not going to be making tea or anything. We're simply going to be inhaling lavender oil. And um, <coughs> this is one of those herbal remedies that is a, an emergency use type. Uh, remedy because a 2012 study suggested that inhaling lavender oil during a migraine may help to relieve those symptoms immediately. Uh, so to use lavender oil you're going to breathe in the oil or you could apply a diluted solution to the temples um, but be careful if you do that because lavender oil if it's not properly diluted could irritate the skin wherever you Put it on. So uh, I always recommend that you do some inhaling and use that when you're having a migraine to help uh, stop the, the pain. Livery. Rosemary of course is known to help with a lot of maladies, uh, muscle and joint pain, memory problems, concentration difficulties, nervous disorders, circulatory problems, liver ailments, and of course what we're discussing today, migraines. And again, um, this is going to be uh, done uh, not as a tea, but as um, uh, uh, being applied topically um, to, the, to the temples. Um, or inhaled. Uh, rosemary oil works wonderful in both of those cases. It does act a little slower than some herbs, but it works well. Now, of course, the plant's leaves can be dried and then they can be ground up and put into capsule form. It can be used in teas, but it's uh, keep in mind when we when we put an herb into a tea, it, into a tea, it tends to be diluted, so you're going to need um, a lot more leaf to make a tea than you will a couple of drops of rosemary oil. But both work, work well, although there have not been very many studies on, on rosemary or rosemary oil. Now I'm going to give you one that's probably a little out there but actually does work and that's raw potato cuttings. And this is uh, some country folk medicine. Uh, if you take thick slices of raw potato and you put them into a thin cloth, maybe a cheesecloth or gauze uh, bandaging, and wrap around the head or rub them directly on the temples, it's said to ease some of the pain of a migraine. Probably only use that potato if you're out of everything else, but you do have a potato. Hey, it's worth a try. Alrighty, moving on here. Honeysuckle. Now, honeysuckle um, has been well studied and it does have anti-cancer and antimicrobial powers. Um, uh, if you use the leaves, stems, and flowers uh, to make a tea, for example, um, it has a relief that is very similar to a very powerful aspirin. So that works relatively well against migraine pain. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yarrow is another one. Again, um, yarrow uh, does tend to be 
um, a little bit bitter at times, but uh, I would but uh, I would suggest you use it in capsule or tincture forms. It doesn't make a great tasting tea. Uh, of course, if that's all you can do, then give it a shot. Um, and and uh, wow, we can go on and on and on. But let's talk about uh, just one more, um, and that's going to be uh, betony. Betony is a mild sedative, so um, it's always been used to treat headache and migraine pain, along with menstrual cramps, stress, and tension. Um, it could also relieve sinus headaches and congestion. Uh, you want to use that uh, um, as a tea or in capsules, but you do not want to take it if you're pregnant, so please avoid betony if you are pregnant. Well, that's a look at some of the uh, herbal thing. And as always, if you have any questions, you can email me. Um, hopefully, this will at least, at least help some of you suffering from it uh, to have some alternatives to over-the-counter medicine. Until next time, merry part and blessed be.